Hello everyone, and welcome. Today I'm going to be talking about Red Shirts by John Scalzi. Now, um, it's kind of uh, amazing considering how much of a fan I am of, uh, you know, uh, sci-fi and fantasy, and well, mostly sci-fi, uh, that I haven't talked about Star Trek until this point, but then again, Considering the fact that none of the books are even canon, I guess, is the, really the main reason why. Which is kind of a shame, because I think we can all agree that, or anybody that's read, you know, the Star Trek Mirror Universe saga can say that, that it is definitely better than Star Trek IV. And it, not to say that Star Trek IV uh, was bad, but I just think that Mirror Universe saga was better but um, also, um, it was kind of a shame that when the Returner came out, we didn't see Kirk, you know, come back. You know, come back as, you know, he comes back in that, you know, and he he's resurrected and stuff. But uh, but then again, <clears throat> although I guess I pr this whole rant was kind of a waste of time since this is not actually uh, Star Trek as you might think, it's actually just Star Trek parody, you know, like, a uh, Galaxy Quest. And, um, yeah. Anyway, um, I'll, I'll be getting to Star Trek proper later on, but for now, uh, let's get to it then. Ensign Andrew Dahl has just been assigned to the Universal Union capital ship, Intrepid, flagship of the Universal Union, since 2456. It's a prestigious posting and Andrew is even more thrilled to be assigned to the ship's xenobiology laboratory. With a chance to serve on away missions, they put it in quotations for some reason, alongside the starship's famous senior officers. Life couldn't be better. Until Andrew begins to realize that, one, Every away mission involves some kind of lethal confrontation with alien forces. Two, the ship's captain, its chief science officer, and the handsome Lieutenant Kerensky. Kind of reminds a lot of people of Ensign uh, Harry Kim. Poor dumb Harry, or in this case, poor dumb Kerensky. Always survives these confrontations. And three... Sadly, at least one low-ranking member is invariably killed. Unsurprisingly, the savvier members below decks avoid away missions at all costs. Then, Andrew stumbles on information that completely transforms his and his colleagues' understanding of what the Intrepid really is, and offers them a crazy high-risk chance to save their lives. Okay, first off, you know, I'm not exactly a big expert in storytelling, but I can at least tell you this much. If you're going to have a plot twist in your sh story, don't tell people that there's a twist. Otherwise, they're going to see it coming, no matter how unexpected or out of left field. You know, they're going to be, everyone's going to be like, oh, so that's what the twist is. Hmm, okay. You know, it's not like, oh my goodness, what a twist. It's, oh, that's what the twist is, you know. And in this case, like, just by reading it for, like, a few minutes, assuming that you have, like, a couple brain cells, you should realize that this book is just going to be up its own ass with all sorts of meta all over the place. And uh, it's just ridiculous how meta it is, you know. And I'm just going to reveal what the plot twist is. It's that the ship is a TV show. They are all fictitious characters, and they're all on the TV show, and they figure it out, and that's it. That's what it, it is, you know, and um, the thing is, like, you know, like, it's I not entirely sure how they figure it out, but, I mean, okay, I was, well, actually, they figure it out kind of e easily as, like, um, the, the tagline, they were expendable until they started comparing notes. And, um, yeah. But I don't necessarily get how they come to the conclusion of TV show or whatever. You know, 
uh, like when I was first, I was kind of thinking that like, maybe it's the twist is like, I know they're like they're corrupt or something. They want to the the people in charge want to feel like big big heroes or whatever. And uh, yeah, but um, or maybe there was some sort of conspiracy going on. But no, as as you read it, then you eventually realize, oh, TV show, it's meta, yeah. On the other hand, like, all the meta is really hilarious, you know, like, um, like, there's one, a character who is, like, uh, I think it's Anderson Grover, where, uh, he's, uh, like, he just gets surprised, killed out of nowhere, and then, like, after the battle's over, is like, the Kerensky says, like, it's a shame, this is going to be his last day, uh, last away mission. Like, he practically begged me to not come, but I insisted, you know, said that it would be our last hurrah. Oh, and I also heard that he was uh, going to get married later on, too. And then he was, was, the other people's reaction to, like, was like, oh, come on, you know. And there was even one other part where, like, a character is, like, think, thinks that she's going to wind up getting, uh, as the saying goes, um, fridged, I think that was the phrase, women in refrigerators, you can look it up, or like, uh, characters, or like, uh, female characters that, like, killed off or, like, character moments for the, for their male boyfriends or whatever, and she's, the character's kind of freaking out, like, oh god, I'm gonna die for, like, this jackass to have a sad character moment, and, you know, that... And there's plenty of other great humorous moments as well, you know. And I think it does a good job at just keeping the humor up and it's just nice, fun, and dark humor, which I like dark humor, you know. Like, one movie that I particularly love, Seven Psychopaths, which has lots of people dying and, you know, like, just laughed at that constantly and, uh, yeah. And, but even so, the whole meta thing is kind of the point where, like, they 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 actually go back in time, and they somehow meet the writers of their sh of the show, you know. And uh, I think it kind of says a lot about the ported like writers in this show that apparently they are so they they, they even wanted to make themselves look more. You know, like people who successfully predicted the future that they even wrote themselves into their own universe, you know. <clears throat> it kind of sounds like sort of M. Night Shyamalan esque levels of douchiness, but yeah. And then there's even more meta ness, you know, when we get to a la final twist in the end, you know, where. You know, but, yeah, I mean, but even so, it's still uh, very fun, humorous, lots of fun moments, you know. My uh, rating for this is a 4 out of 5. Yeah, there's some flaws, but, you know, there's some stuff that kind of bugs me, like the whole writers writing themselves into their own universe or whatever, and it gets kind of silly. But, um, you know, it's still very good, you know, the, I find that, you know, the, all of the humor is still great, even if you're not necessarily a Star Trek fan, and, uh, you know, you're just sort of vaguely familiar with the, you know, certain tropes and movies and TV shows and whatnot, you know, you're still going to find this hilarious, and you're going to laugh at everything, and it's just really good. Anyway, uh, moving on from Star Trek parody, next time we're going to be taking a look at another fan, another very, or uh, taking a look at a very famous thing, Star Trek, I mean, Star Wars Darth Plagueis. Until then, see you later, keep yourselves awesome, and have a nice day.